Cupertino, California may be home to the tech giant Apple Incorporated, but it's also home to our first inspiration home. Welcome to Life and Style. I'm Lori Delisle, and today we're starting a new three-part series called Micro Budget Design. And we are going to be looking at this home that I recently finished uh, working with a client on. And um, we're gonna be talking about how I helped my client update her home in order to sell it on a tiny little budget. This is a modest uh, sized home and it's ironic um, to be talking about micro budgeting here in Cooper Tino, uh, California because this modest home, it's a five bedroom home um, here in uh, Cooper Tino, this size home um, will market for currently between 2.5 million and $3 million. Um, but um, my retired uh, empty nester client wants to downsize and so uh, putting in big budgets on interior design updates didn't make sense since she's going to be downsizing into a smaller home. So we went on a micro budget to make this home look fantastic. So let's go inside and take a look. So welcome inside. I'm going to be talking about um, addressing your initial goal when you're micro budgeting and um, how you start this process. And the first thing I did when I came into this home was um, see what I had to work with. And so that's gonna be your number one step is analyzing um, your home and deciding what do I have that I, need to, that I need to work with for now and what's my end goal. And so, um, as you can see by the landscape uh, behind me, um, what I had was a big beige box. That was the first thing. And um, I'm going to be inserting in here um, some rather raw footage <laughs> that I took um, towards the beginning of the process in this home. Um, and so it's kind of rough footage, but I wanted to get you a little bit of idea of um, what I'm starting with. did with my homeowner was um, we went through and we decided what is the furniture um, worth keeping and um, what's the furniture um, that really um, we don't need to have that can go. And so when you're trying to make those decisions, um, the things that you want to look at is quality. Looking at furniture, furniture is a big ticket item. And so um, uh, furnishings, when you're looking at a micro budget, a tiny budget, for the most part, you're gonna have to stick with what you have. And on further episodes, we will talk about how you can make the furniture that you have look a little bit better. Um, but for the start, you have to um, take note of what you're working with and um, and so for starters, like we have this sofa here, which is a, um, a nice homage to the 80s. And my uh, client's beloved sofa, as you can see, it has um, this uh, lovely abstract 80s print in it. It's an off-white with some pastel, or well, 80s we would say mauve and um, some aqua blue gray. And so um, 
That's the starter of one of the pieces that we were working with. And as you can see also, as I mentioned, lots of beige. All the walls in this home are beige for the most part. Um, I am not a fan of beige. Every home that I've lived in since I was a child had builder's beige walls. And uh, we have started, well, we're two years into a major renovation project. And I told my husband, if I have one beige wall, if he makes me put one beige wall in that home, <laughs> I'll slit my throat, not literally, but um, I hate builder's beige. But when you're in a project like this, in a large home like this, repainting all of the walls on a micro budget does not work. So instead, what you wanna do is design around what you have. So we have builder's beige. We have this uh, charming 80s sofa. We have down here beige, more beige um, 80s furniture. So you're gonna take an inventory of your furniture and um, what you're going to be doing is designing around what you have and updating it, uh, which is what I've done here, um, adding lots of luxurious cushions. And what you're going to do is take what you have and then design a color scheme, a modern color scheme around it. So what I've done is update that 80s color scheme and instead of that 80s mauve on the sofa, we pulled out a more modern dusty pink. And instead of that 80s aqua blue, we pulled out modern grays. And so now that aqua blue looks more like a gray and that mauve looks more like a dusty pink. And those are more modern colors. Probably the most difficult part of this initial process is the uh, paring down. When we do the start of analyzing what we have in our home to work with, um, we'll start to realize, I hope, that probably 95% of our population has way too much in our home. A lot of things that we never use, a lot of junk that we've collected over the years that uh, maybe was sentimental to us at one point in time, but really isn't anymore. Um, just tchotchkes and old papers and books and all kinds of stuff. And if we look back at our before video from this room, um, which was our uh, my client's, one of my client's children's rooms, um, that's only maybe a quarter of what was in here um, when we initially started. and it included um, two or three desks, maybe five bookshelves, um, um, some bookshelves full, some totally empty. And so uh, we had to look at um, what was really necessary and really desks were not necessary in here at all. Um, all those bookshelves were not necessary, including most of the things on those bookshelves. And so we cleared all of that out and then we also had to look at, um, was the per furniture in this room even appropriate for this room at this point in time? And so the bed that's in here now wasn't the bed that was in here originally because um, this bed could be made into a queen, uh, which was much more suitable for the size of this room than where it was originally. It was used in a smaller bedroom downstairs as a twin. And so um, you need to think about um, when you're doing this initial assessment of what do I need and what am I looking for in my um, updated home? Thinking about um, even is the furniture in the right, best place for it right now? And do I need this piece of furniture? Those are things to look at. And so we had, I think, five or six bookshelves in here originally, and we pared down to two. And so we looked at which bookshelves were in the best uh, shape and which were the best for the color scheme as we moved forward. And um, speaking of color scheme, if you notice, um, we've gotten a little bit of a different color scheme going in here, um, but it's a riff on the one downstairs. And so when you're looking at choosing a color scheme for your home, um, as you're going forward, thinking of something modern and new, again, you're looking at something that's gonna work with your furniture that you already have. 
and um, what's working in your home and say if you're in an apartment and you can't paint the walls, right? Um, uh, so uh, you want to look at choosing a palette, uh, a selection of colors that all work together. Um, so you're going to start with a color palette that works for the whole house. And then you'll choose three or four colors for each, um, a selection of three or four colors per room. You don't want to try and throw all of them in one room at a time. Um, but by choosing a, a select few per room, you'll have a nice flow as you move in and out of rooms. So downstairs we have the beige and we had that blush pink and we had the gray. And as we move into this guest bedroom up here, we have the beige and we have the grays, and then we've thrown in some nice yellows. And then as you notice, as we go into other rooms, you'll see those beiges, you'll see those grays, you might see the yellow, or you might see um, um, some new colors, but we'll always be riffing off of these uh, a palette that makes it uh, easy on the eye, easy on the soul, and makes the home feel comfortable and welcoming. Well, so this room was the beigest of them all and uh, really put me in a mood when I saw it for the first time. It was a little overwhelming. Beige walls, beige carpet, beige furniture, kind of chunky dated beige furniture, uh, beige fireplace, beige, beige. And, um, and I'll show you soon, um, and if you look back at the previous video, some pretty um, dated uh, curtains as well. And so here's what I did. Um, this is what then I would suggest you do too, is get some lofty goals in your head at this point. We've analyzed what we have. We have beige walls. We have beige, 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 beige. And then we have um, this, uh, chunky wood, like um, what we would call today in modern speak, modern terms, whitewashed wood furniture. And we have uh, kind of mixed with, well, it's uh, 80s stucco, but we'll call it Adobe um, furniture. And um, yes, that's what we have. So I got in my head and I went for my lofty goal of this home. And I hope that you can see it now was um, a modern organic botanical was my theme. And so I went on Pinterest with a little boho in there. I went on but, um, uh, Pinterest and I um, started pinning like crazy all kinds of things that had that modern organic boho botanical thing going on with lots of beiges. Um, I made sure everything I pinned had lots of beiges in it, lots of whitewashed woods, because this is what we're working with, whitewashed woods, beige, and, um, and, uh, and that's where my inspiration started from. And then I actually got really excited because I realized um, it was very doable then because this kind of thing, like the, um, the rosette, the wood rosette that I have hanging over the bed is very current and very easy to find at um, stores that I adore, like uh, Home Goods. So great for um, our micro budgeting interior design. Home goods, people. Home goods. Woo, woo, woo. So that's when um, things got going for me in this design. 
Um, and so then you can see where I pulled in um, the colors of our, of our uh, design palette here. We have the beige, we have the uh, gray, can we see gray here? Um, the, I don't think you can see the gray too much on your, um, in the lamp over there. You can see that the, the little bit of the gray. Um, we have some whites, which I've also pulled in in this palette. Um, and then um, the uh, blush pink here and the spread, the yellows here, and in the floral arrangement over here. And then a new color introduction, green which uh, is perfect for botanicals. And I wanted to bring in a print and some pops of color in this room because it is so beige. Um, bringing in this nice, fresh botanical print really livens up this room and makes it feel fresh and alive instead of wah, 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 heavy and um, really dreary which it really before felt so heavy and dreary and and almost sad with just all that just beige um, and now the furniture actually looks quite fresh and modern um, and where before I thought um, it just <laughs> looked so outdated it actually looks kind of hip and cool now so what we're doing is taking this furniture that really was so dated and we're flipping it around because we're working with it instead of against it. And that's the key. You work with that dated furniture instead of against it and turning it into something quite amazingly cool. Got it? Good. Micro budget keys when you're micro budgeting. One other edit I did in this uh, room was, and you look at the pre befores, <laughs> was there were some pretty heavy duty draping in uh, these rooms. And we kept some for privacy here. You can see we kept the, um, the bottom draperies that can pull across for a privacy in this bedroom. But um, I removed all the heavy uh, valances on top here and over here over the round window. Um, they were very heavy and they really added some, really what I wanna say is doom and gloom to this room. And by removing those, we've really opened up the room and made it feel a lot lighter and brighter. So really consider, even if you may have paid a great deal of money for those um, fancy draperies, long ago, consider removing them now to modernize the room. And um, I have to tell you, when we took those down, the amount of dust alone um, for your own health, <laughs> take those puppies down because um, there was so much dust and um, sticky, sticky, grimy film on those draperies that it I, I just really don't think it's healthy to have something up like that for so long so take those puppies down and get a whole new lease on life uh, my last tip for your pre-analyzing decorating micro budgeting is considering furniture placement in a room if we look at this room in the before video we'll see that um, this desk was shoved up against the wall. On the other side of the room. And when you do that, when you shove a desk up against a wall, um, it makes the room feel small. When, uh, a desk or anything, everything's pushed up against the walls. It makes the room feel quite small. And um, another tricky thing about that is you see all of the computer equipment. You see all of the cords. You see all of the maybe paperwork dropped on the floor. Um, you see it all. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly. But when you pull the desk out away from the wall, 
um, especially when you have a desk like this with a back on it, um, all the computer cords, and my client has um, uh, removed her uh, computer for the sale, but um, you will have a your monitor here, but all the computer cords then for your mouse and your um, keyboard can go and get tucked in behind and down so that all those cords are uh, hidden and your CPU can be hidden underneath here and so you don't see any of that. And the other great part is that as you're sitting at your desk working, you're not looking at a wall. I am actually looking out the window into the neighborhood here and it is actually quite a lovely place and quite frankly, <laughs> I'd like to just sit here for a while. It's um, lovely. Um, so when you are thinking about what furniture you're getting rid of and uh, what furniture to move rooms to, also think about maybe this furniture is gonna stay in this room, but maybe I should pull it off the wall instead of shoving it against the wall. In, a com in the coming weeks, I will show you another way that we've uh, pulled furniture off of a wall in a room to generate uh, a nice cozy seating area. Sometimes when we are analyzing our furniture and paring down, we'll do the best that we can to not have to purchase anything. But when it's all said and done, sometimes we just have to bite the bullet and buy some new pieces. And here is an example. My homeowner has this, um, Kind of really cool table. It, again, it's probably from the 80s and it's hard to see here, but it's a big, huge, solid piece of stone and um, set on top with a big glass top. And you can see from the kitchen, it's not in a really big area. And prior to this, she had four um, dark brown suede chairs sitting around the um, table and they were quite large, um, solid, all the way to the ground, brown chairs. And it really made this table eat up the space, I think is the best way of putting it. It made it look very heavy and made the space look very, very small. And adding on top of it, the brown did not mix in with our going forward color scheme. And so um, we looked at all of our options and all the furniture around the house. And there really was no other option for chairs to go around this table. And so we had to bite the bullet and look at purchasing some new chairs. And so when you're doing something like that, you really need to think um, long term, you need to think, is this going with my scheme? Um, how does it make the space feel? Is it going to make the space feel larger or smaller? Um, is it going to make it feel, um, uh, are they comfortable? <laughs> have you sat in them? I can't even tell you how many people um, I know that I've ordered chairs and stools and such things online and they got them. They look really cool, but they are not comfortable to sit in at all. And then is it good quality? Is it going to actually last? Because, um, there are a lot of chairs, um, from, and pieces of furniture, uh, we'll say, uh, well, flat pack furniture like the shelves we were looking up upstairs, that's flat pack furniture, it's not solid wood, um, and it's not, it does not last the test of time. So even it's, though it's cheap now, it's going to need to be replaced soon. Um, so these are the chairs we went with, because as you can see, I'm actually touching a chair right now, but visually it's not there. And so this is really a great design option when you're looking at a small space. And these chairs, believe it or not, um, I have experience with these chairs. They are great chairs. They stand the test of time and they are from a flat pack store. So you can get quality um, furnishings 
um, for a decent price at the flat pack stores. You just need to know what you're purchasing. Um, that flat pack store, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is Ikea. Um, so I have experience with these chairs. I love these chairs. They're a great classic design. Um, it's a, a time tested design that mid-century kind of modern that goes, it can go, it stands the test of time. That's what I'm saying. Another option is buying um, quality uh, antique used furniture because it's solid wood and again, it's been around forever and it will stay around forever because it's not it, it's solid wood and you can buy that stuff for pennies on the dollar right now. Um, you can paint it, you can do all kinds of stuff to it. Um, vintage solid wood furniture, it's cheap right now. Um, I highly recommend you look into that instead of buying the particle board flat pack stuff. Like I said, it's gonna go and fall apart in by two to five years, okay? So if you gotta buy it, look at options. Look at your options and really think about your options, okay? I hope you've enjoyed our first trip into our inspiration home here in sunny Cupertino, California. And I hope that I've given you a little bit of insight into how I approach our micro budget interior design with uh, assessing what you have to work with to begin with, looking at um, getting rid of things that don't need to go with you moving forward, looking at your lofty goals, uh, what you want to your end look to look like, and then working at pairing back, um, which is what we're going to be talking about moving forward. In the next two episodes, we're going to be um, talking about something that's very popular here in Cupertino and the Silicon Valley, which is going green recycling, repurposing things. And so we're gonna be talking about these things here in our inspiration house and how I used those um, to decorate in these rooms and some other rooms that we haven't seen yet. And then on our third episode, we're gonna be doing some DIY projects also to keep our micro budget intact. So I hope you join me. Please um, subscribe and share with your friends like and comment and let me know how I'm doing and let me know what you'd like to hear more from, of from me. Um, I just love having you um, share in life with me and be sure to make life beautiful by curating those moments, being on purpose about it and share in a beautiful life and as we do this, we'll share in a beautiful life and a beautiful style together. Thank you. Bye-bye.